cities like New York, I think, are trying to call out. Cities like May Miami are calling out that problem. Even today, for those of you who haven't read the news, uh, Gavin Newsom issued an executive order for the state of California calling out the fact that there's not regulatory clarity and really championing the need because about a quarter of the US blockchain companies are based here in, in California. The need for that clarity. Now, that's one state, and Mayor Adams referenced one city. Th these are federal, I mean, the federal level, and a lot of countries around the world, some you know, represented here at the Milken event, are way ahead of where the US is, and that is a problem. Mayor Adams, you have a view? No, I think, I think it's, um, it's, it's right on target. I think uh, the, uh, internationally, uh, this technology is not going to wait on America to reach a level of comfortability. It's just not going to happen. And uh, it's here. Um, when you think of blockchain, uh, the ability to really start uh, addressing some of our record keeping, a uh, deed, uh, birth certificates, uh, how to get, uh, you know, just using this technology to run our cities better. And government is so disconnected um, from how this technology is very helpful. We saw that when there was a panel uh, with Facebook and others testify in front of Congress. Uh, it's, it's as though government is operating on a different reality from what's happening on the ground. And we have to embrace, embrace this technology, do it in a safe way, because you are talking about um, you know, the income of individuals. Uh, but there's great possibilities. Like, which we want to do a cyber wallet. Why are we still having paychecks for people? Uh, and, and why are we even worrying about if a person have a bank account or not, when we could use a cyber wallet, pay people right into their cyber, cyber wallet, save millions of dollars from printing um, paper, then take the data we learn from spending habits to incentivize better behavior. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And of course, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have the mayor of New York on the digital wallet saying they can use that data to improve your spending habits. Guys, I thought you could spend your money on whatever you wanted to spend it on. Didn't you work for it? But if you're receiving government assistance, they're going to tell you what, where, and when, and how to buy. And remember the crypto teacher told you, these stable coins and CBDCs are programmable. They're going to be able to know every dollar that the government has spent. Guys, they bought up the world. They, it's no longer about money. It's about controlling the masses. Remember, blockchain gives the NWO the all seeing eye. And the system that we use right now, guys, is based on an IOU. That's the reason why XRP and XLM are so important. Because if I'm moving anything of large value, I have collateral. It's that synthetic stable coin that gives you real-time settlement that opens the gates of trillions and trillions of dollars of liquidity. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new red order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. The way everything that we're working on, but you know, the way I, was, the way I think about this is that any transaction that has a middleman any transaction that requires someone to kind of commute the trust between the, 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 the transaction with security settlement, insurance settlements. Uh, there are a lot of transactions out there that have a lot of friction. Uh, this morning I was talking, it was a very interesting startup called Proppy, looking at uh, residential, you know, real, tokenizing real estate and using kind of effectively an NFT to transfer the ownership of a home. Uh, you know, Ripple has been, because our customers tend to be financial institutions and banks, some of those customers will approach us and say, hey, look, we see these other vertical applications of how you could use a blockchain like the XRP Ledger because of its efficiency to solve other problems. But we haven't really, we're doing some lending stuff that we've talked publicly about, but. Uh, there is uh, this concept inside Stellar of, of uh, a token, right? And that token was meant to represent fiat currencies for the most part. I mean, we thought maybe people would use it for gold and other things, Stellar. But if you're doing something that's very simple where it's like a loyalty point or like, uh, you know, an ounce of gold or what, what have you, like that's better done on Stellar because it's just designed for that, right? So we're going to a different economy and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more 
leverage to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.